this practical, I'm going to be doing a titration in order to determine the amount of calcium in a water sample. So I'm using standard titration equipment of a burette, pipette, beakers, conicals and a funnel. I need a 10 molar buffer solution, which I've made already using a solution of ammonia and ammonium chloride. And in the titration, I will also be using a solution of EDTA, a 0.01 molar of EDTA, which I've already produced. The indicator for this reaction is aerochrome black tea. Before starting the, re the reaction, I'm going to first of all rinse the burette. So leave the tap open, beaker underneath. This is deionized water to rinse out the burette. But before I can use the burette, I also need to rinse the burette with the solution it's going to contain. The EDTA is going to be put into the burette. So here I have my EDTA solution. So once the water is all run out, I will now rinse with my EDTA solution. And now that that's all run through, we can now fill the burette with the EDTA solution. I'm now going to fill the burette with EDTA. So pour the EDTA to above the zero point. Remove the funnel before you start the titration. So I remove my funnel, because any droplets that are on the bottom of the funnel can drop in and give you false readings. Then we'll open the tap to fill below the tap. And bring the bottom meniscus to in line with the zero point. And now our burette is full of solution, we fill below the tap and the burette is vertical in front of us. The burette is now ready to be used. Next I need to take my water sample. I need 100 cm cubed. So I'm using a 50 ml pipette, which first of all I must rinse with the water that I'm going to be using as my sample. So I'm squeezing the water up. And then let the water run out, and now my pipette is clean. Because I'm using it as a water sample, I don't have to rinse out the solution it's going to contain, it's because the water sample is a solution that it is going to contain. So put your pipette bulb on top of the pipette, and this is my water sample to be analyzed. I'm going to press the button marked S to draw the liquid up into the pipette. And this is a 50 ml pipette, so when you see the graduation mark here, and the bottom of the meniscus, is in line with the graduation mark at eye level. I then have drawn 50 liter samples of my water solution. If you overshoot the mark, you can let the liquid run down by squeezing the button mark E. Now I've got 50 cm cubed of solution. I'm going to put this into my reaction conical, press the button mark E, and let the 50 milliliters of, of the water solution run into the conical flask. So you see, there'll be a drop remaining at the bottom of the pipette. You hold the tip of the pet up beside the conical flask, hold for a few seconds, and then you deliver 50 cm cubed into the conical flask. I'll now do this a second time, and then we'll have 100 ml of our water sample in the conical flask ready for the titration. In order for this titration to work correctly, you need to add in your buffer before you put in your indicator. So a few drops of our 10, pH 10 buffer into the solution, and then I will add the aerochrome black tea. The aerochrome black tea turns red in the presence of calcium ions. The tiniest amount of a spatula tip is all that's required. An aerochrome black tea will turn red once it complexes onto the calcium ions in the sample. So we see a wine red color there. We're now ready to start the titration. So as we titrate, we'll see the wine color that's the wine color is the complex aerochrome black tea with the calcium. As I add in the EDTA solution, while swirling, the EDTA is picking up the calcium of the aerochrome black tea. And when all the calcium is being taken by the EDTA, the aerochrome black tea will turn a different color. You should notice it's now turned a blue color. To demonstrate this more clearly, I'm going to show 
color changes. So here I'm just taking 100 mils of solution. And here I've got a sample of sodium chloride. If I add sodium chloride into my solution, sodium is a plus one metal ion. And we notice no color change. However, if I add calcium chloride, which is what the aerochrome black tea is detecting, so I take a sample of calcium chloride and put it into the solution, you notice the color turning red. That's because we've got an excess of calcium, so the aerochrome black tea complex with this calcium turning a red color. Since the sodium chloride didn't react with the EDTA or the aerochrome black tea at all, we can actually use this property to great effect. If you add some sodium chloride to a sample of aerochrome black tea, it helps to dilute the aerochrome black tea so that when your students are measuring it out, they don't take too much of your aerochrome black tea indicator. Aerochrome black tea rounds down with your sodium chloride. And then we can use this indicator in our solution so that when the student accidentally takes too much sample, they can still get the correct color change.